Assalamualaikum and good day to you all. My name is Ramadhani Wasito from the MWT MSU. And for today, I will share to you about my assignment one for my subject, which is human computer interaction. So for this assignment one, I have to do a review for four applications. First one is for a kiosk application. Second one for messenger trial application. For third, for a mobile application, and four is for a software application. For the first one, the kiosk application, I choose Lalaport Bukit Bintang directory. So Lalaport is a shopping mall located in Bukit Bintang, Kuala Lumpur. This mall has six levels, starts from lower ground one until level four. Each of its level has their own direct which usually can be found near the escalator. The visitors can use this small directory to get information on how to reach their desired places, for example, stores, toilets, rural parking places, and many more. This directory also provides information of all the events and promotions that are occurring at the mall. For the process of the kiosk applications, I will show you a video. Okay, so this is the video, uh, like the process of the, on how to use the kiosk applications in Nalaport Mall. So this is the mall directory. So in the first few seconds, we can see the main page or the main menu, which has uh, the mini map of its levels. It starts from the uh, LG1, yeah, LG1 until level four. So here we go. So first, there are the amenities like the toilet and then the many more, like leaves, rural, and it shows the, the logo and which display in the maps. So here, the your locations. Uh, in this video, I'm on the level four, which is the rooftop of the Lala Port, which are known for the park, the open spaces. And then this one, I try to go to the nearest toilet from my uh, spot. So the dotted line means that that is the direction that I need to walk in order for me to go to the toilet. Then it also shows the, the distance and the approximate time to go there. Yeah. And this is, I try to go to the drop off or pick up. So I need to go, I need to get off the mall, right? So I try to use the escalator. Uh, this is from the level force. So I need to get down the escalator first in order to reach the drop out or drop off zone. Then it shows the animations that I need to go through uh, four levels and then reach the G levels and then walk to the drop off zone. Yeah. That's all for the video. Okay, for the next one. Uh, which one is it the poor design or, or and the interactions? So from the main page, we can see that in my opinion, this kiosk is beautifully designed, but it still lacks informations that are needed by the visitors. So in the situations, I was searching my way to the nearest escalator, but still confused 
because I didn't know what was it next to, like what is the nearest stores from the escalators, what is the name of it. So I think it is better if they provide the store name and the name of the wings, like the north wing, south wing, east wing, or west wing. Okay, so of course it has benefits. So I think this kiosk application is really beneficial for the visitors, especially those who just came for the first time. As it gives information on how to reach their desired location so they will not get lost inside the mall. Okay, so for the next one, Messiah application. So the Messi government created the smartphone app Messiah to aid contact trusting activities in the country in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. Masijatra's primary purpose is to help the department manage and contain the COVID-19 outbreak, give users the ability to track their health throughout the, the disease, and help users find the closest medical facilities for COVID-19 screening and treatment. It also used uh, throughout the nation for using the QR code scanning method to check in while visiting a new location. And it is currently also utilized for COVID-19 vaccination registrations. My SD trace is a master add-on that employs Bluetooth low energy to scan the area for other users and notify the user if they come into touch with a COVID-19 affected person. Okay, so this is how it works. And Masitra. So basically, this one first is the main page. So basically, when you open the app, this is the first page that shows up. So this page shows your name, your uh, ID number, or your passport number, and then your status race, your vaccinated, vaccinated, vaccination status, and then if you want to check in to the new place, then you can just click on the check in button. And then after that, uh, you can go to the home page with many functions there are, like the COVID-19 status, COVID-19 vaccination, self-report, traveler, infectious disease tracker, help desk, and many more. Even there are uh, news regarding the, the latest update from the ministry. And then we can go to the statistics where, where there are a lot of statistics regarding the COVID-19 uh, update. And then the last one, we can go to the profile to view our profiles, like the ID, password number, your state, your QR number, and your status. And then next. Okay. So in my opinion, for the police and interaction is the use of mixed language. In this case, is the English and Bahasa Melayu. And homepage that may lead to confusion. The foreigners must deal with this even though they already set the application's language into English. In order not to create confusion, it is better if all the contents in the application remain in the user preferred language. So if the user preferred to be in English, then all of the content is supposed to be in English. And otherwise, if the users prefer in Bahasa Melayu, then all of the content should be in Bahasa Melayu. And for me, the benefits is really important for especially Malaysia government and all the residents living in Malaysia because this application helps to track of it in cases, vaccination appointment, and then all the news regarding the COVID-19. And then for the mobile app, I choose Catatan Keuangan. So it is uh, from my experience back in Indonesia. So Catatan Keuangan is a mobile application that is used to record your financial activities, both expenditure and income activities. 
the main feature of this application is to report financial reporting activities per day, monthly, weekly, annually to make it easier for users to monitor their finance. Okay, so how does it work? So first from the left to right, so from the left is the main page. So when you open the application, this is the first page that will show up. So it shows your daily report activities from the day, the income expenses like that. And then move to the right, it where you add your transaction. So first we add the expenses and we can edit the date, category, the amount, and also the note. And then this is the kind of categories that there are. And at the end, the users also can edit and add any categories that they want. And then it also has a top letter functions. So it's very useful. Thanks. It is the income page. So whenever you have an income, you can track it and then note in the application. So just like the expense page, so you can uh, add the date, the category, the amount, the note, and then you save it. And then next, we can see it in the weekly report, report from the week, the first week, second week, third week, and to the last week. And then we also can see the monthly report and then also the yearly report. The next, still. And this apps also uh, export. So, I mean, we already uh, create the list and then we want to export the the report, the finance to report into your preferred um, files like the Excel, Word, like that. And then we also can filter the report from the categories. Or for, for example, we can just filter the insurance, the foods that we have spent so far, and etc. And then there is a sidebar page so there are search chart category settings the rating how center and about and then from the search you can use the keyword for example your favorite food and and that you know how much you spend so far for that food and then next is the chart so it can you can know how many percent you spend on the, for example, the electricity, the water bill, the food, and your vacation uh, financial. And then we, here we go, we can add category and you can add any type you like. And then we can choose, is it expense or income? That, and then this is the settings. Okay, so for mine, the poor design interaction is the frequently asked question page because it used Bahasa Indonesia, so it may lead to confusion to foreign users. So I think it is better if this page also in the same preferred language of the user's English. So yeah, because the, the other's page is on English, but this frequently asked question page is still in Bahasa Indonesia. So yeah, I think it's whether it is also in English. So the benefits, so this application is very useful because it helps to track our expenses and incomes. And it also gives us reports from daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly financial activities. In short, this application helps us to become financially, financially responsible. Next, 
uh, for the software, I choose the uh, API Detection Generator. So basically, an API Detection Generator is a software that automatically formats academic citations in accordance with the American Physiological Association standard. It will ask for key information about the source, such as the author's title and published date, and will output this information with the proper punctuation and formatting mandated by the official APA star guide. A formatted citation produced by a generator can be placed into the bibliography of an academic paper to acknowledge the source charted site in the main body of the document. Okay, so this is how it works. So basically, we can see that the when you click the link, so it will refer to the main page. So this is the main page. The first one on the top, the left one. Okay, so that is, that is the main page. And if you want to add your citations or copy and paste the link, you can select either one of these website, journal article, uh, book, report, image, or any type of the source that you want to cite. And then we go to the right where I choose a link and then copy paste it into the search box and it automatically uh, find the website. So after you select the website, right? And it also automatically fill up the information that are needed. But if the information are false, then you can also edit it uh, as you like. So, so before you uh, finish or uh, confirm to add the site, uh, we need to edit first and then boom. We can see it, the reference list, the bottom right one. So here I successfully cite the website and it's now already in APA format and it's ready to be used for my purposes, for my journals. Okay, so thanks. Okay, so for the poor design interaction, for me, it is in the main page where there are too many informations and it may lead to confusion in which one that needed to be clicked, right? But there are too many buttons and too many informations in this one main page. And so I think it is better if only the necessary informations that come up in the main page. Okay, so the benefits of this APS citation generator, uh, surely it makes life so much easier for students and researchers, and it helps to cite the desired website, journal, book, report, and image into APA citation format. That's all for me, and thank you for watching. Bye.